10 minutes, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I am pleased to be able to open this afternoon's debate on the Culture, Tourism, Europe and External Affairs Committee's report, Making Scotland a Screen Leader. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the committee clerks and our SPICE researcher who worked so hard over the course of this extensive inquiry. I'd also like to thank the many individuals and organisations from across the film and television industry who gave oral and written evidence to the committee and who hosted our visits, including Ward Park Studios Cumbernauld, Film City Glasgow, Northern Ireland Screen, BBC Scotland, Scotland and below the radar TV production in Belfast. We're also very grateful to the Edinburgh International Film Festival who hosted the launch of our report at the Traverse Theatre in June where it received an extremely positive reception from the industry professionals who packed the theatre. The overwhelming support that our report has received from stakeholders has made a deep impression and indeed is humbling not least because these people are experts and high achievers in their field. The government, its agencies and important commissioners such as the BBC must recognise the significance of that overwhelming industry support for our recommendations, not just in this debate but in the months and years ahead. Since our report has been published, we have seen direct evidence of the economic impact of the screen sector, uh, particularly um, in the last week with the Premier of the Outlaw King. Um, this was a a Scottish production, Scottish producer Gillian Berry and, and director David McKenzie partnering with uh, a global giant, Netflix. Uh, it's an £85 million pound production which more than justifies the investment made in it uh, by Creative Scotland's uh, production funds. And it's the need to attract more productions like that of international scale that was a key theme of our inquiry. It's certainly true that spending on film and television has increased exponentially in Scotland, an impressive 300% in the last decade. As well as Outlaw King, we can point to other recent and forthcoming successes, Infinity Wars and Mary Queen of Scotland, and perhaps most significant of all, the investment by Sony in Outlander. With all this going on, you might ask why the need for this inquiry, this report and this debate. Scotland's surely already a screen leader but we need to take a comparative approach. The worldwide demand uh, for high quality screen content is not to put too fine a point on it, insatiable. Netflix alone is making 40 productions in the UK this year out of 700 around the world, a global investment of eight billion pounds. We need to attract more of this type of investment, but time and again, our inquiry heard that Scotland was behind other parts of the UK in attracting it. So while we are growing, uh, we, we were concerned that we're not growing fast enough. And just this week, we heard James Cosmo, one of the stars of Outlaw King, bemoan the failure to capitalise on Braveheart, in which he also starred more than two decades ago. In particular, he uh, criticised the failure to deliver a dedicated film studio, a saga which sometimes seems as ancient as the battles of Bruce and Wallace themselves. Returning to our report, uh, it, it seeks to address some of the barriers uh, that we need to overcome, which were first identified in 2015 by this Parliament's Economy, Energy and Tourism Committee. As well as the need for studio capacity, the committee then uh, uh, recommended that we need to address the failure to set up a proper screen agency. Uh, we need more investment. Uh, we, the, we need to address the failure of the BBC and other commissioners to support sufficiently the Indigenous independent production sector in Scotland. And we also needed to address the misunderstanding within Scot Scottish enterprise of how screen businesses operate. As a result of that 2015 report, the Screen Sector Leadership Group, a group of experts chaired by John McCormack, the former head of BBC Scotland and Scottish Screen, was tasked with making recommendations. They did so in January 2017 and they found that the public sector support for screen was fragmented with a number of different bodies having some responsibility in specific areas. This meant that there was no agreed overarching screen strategy and there was a lack of leadership and accountability and they also made recommendations about investment from government and wanting the BBC to spend more of the licence fee it raised in Scotland here in Scotland. My committee set itself the task of ensuring that the recommendations made by John McCormick's expert group were taken forward. And I think it's fair to say that the government preempted our uh, inquiry in the leadership group's report by announcing significant new money for investment in production. And they also committed to setting up a screen unit within Creative Scotland, something that was seen as a significant step forward. Initial proposals for the new screen unit were published in December last year. 
and our committee began formal evidence in February this year. We heard from over 50 witnesses, from directors and producers to regional screen officers and educators. The new screen unit within Creative Scotland is intended to bring strategic focus and leadership by promoting Scotland as a place to make films, attracting international investment, supporting the indigenous industry, including through training, working with television commissioners to ensure more productions are made here and crucially to address the fragmentation amongst public agencies whose job it was to support the sector. It became clear early in our inquiry that the model set out in the proposals for the new screen unit did not command confidence among those working in the sector in Scotland, the people it was supposed to support. The governance arrangements of the proposed new unit introduced additional bureau bureaucratic complexity with five different public agencies sitting on its management committee. There was a distinct lack of industry expertise at executive and board level and the convoluted system of government, governance involved multiple levels of accountability with no clear lines of decision making. The unit was also behind schedule. The long promised online portal for the industry, a place where anyone in the screen sector looking for support uh, could go, hadn't materialised at that point and key appointments hadn't been made. As we were wrestling with this evidence, the committee visited Northern Ireland Screen in Belfast. It had been instrumental in supporting the delivery of a film studio and attracting Game of Thrones. It was completely industry focused and of course independent. The contrast with Scotland could not have been more stark if you pardon my Game of Thrones pun. Therefore, in May this year, we published an interim report which recommended that rather than pursuing an interagency model, Scotland should work towards an autonomous standalone agency led by the industry with clear lines of accountability. While I understand that our interim report named the bigger picture may have provoked some initial frustration in government, we believe that was both necessary and effective, as indeed are the recommendations of our final report. It is clear from subsequent decisions that the evidence that we have gathered has to some extent being influential, although a standalone screen agency has not, of course, been set up. Screen Scotland has now launched, albeit later than planned. Its governance arrangements seem to have been streamlined and recent appointments have bolstered industry experience at board level. Indeed, they include some individuals such as David Strachan, the founding manager of Tern Television, who gave evidence to our committee inquiry and who played a really important part in influencing our report. The committee welcomed the appointment of Isabel Davis, formerly of the British Film Institute, as executive director responsible for the screen unit. In September, Creative Scotland also published the Memorandum of Understanding to formalise the partnerships between the agencies responsible for the delivery of Screen Scotland, something that our committee also called for. We still await the detailed business plan which will underpin the operation of Screen Scotland. In a recent letter to the committee, Creative Scotland indicated that the business plan and recruitment of business development staff would be completed by March 2019. However, the committee remains concerned that the MOU setting out the responsibilities of the partners sets out a role for Scottish enterprise which is broadly similar as before in that it provides business development support only for businesses identified as having high growth potential. Time and again, the committee heard persuasive evidence the Scottish enterprise support model is unsuited to most screen businesses. It bases investment on the number of full-time salaried employers, employees. But of course, the industry model is based on freelance workers. Making a film or a TV production is by its nature a short-term undertaking. Companies expand and contract, and this does not fit the Scottish enterprise model. We're pleased that business support professionals will work inside the screen unit, but we do not see that Creative Scotland should shoulder the entire financial burden of this, given that Scottish Enterprise is also funded by government to support and grow our creative industries. The committee therefore recommended that part of the Scottish Enterprise budget be transferred to a standalone screen agency for business development. Another significant part of our report addressed the wrong running sore, as I've already mentioned, uh, of the need for a film studio and more adequate infrastructure in Scotland. Since our report was published, Netflix has spoken about what it calls the overcrowded UK studio market. There is a demand, so why can't Scotland rise to? Other areas of the UK have done so, most recently Birmingham. At present, War Park Studios in Cumbernauld, where Outlander is filmed, is Scotland's only dedicated large-scale facility. And members saw firsthand how beneficial a production and facility of this scale can be. 
Much of the success of Ward Park can be attributed to the passion and drive of producer David Brown, who was able to bring, bring a world-class production like Outlander to Scotland um, with minimal support from the agencies. The Scottish Government established a film studio delivery group back in 2013, which brought together multiple agencies with the purpose of delivering studio capacity. Uh, but it's not delivered. In a recent letter to the committee, Creative Scotland announced that a studio business case received the approval in principle from the Cabinet Secretary in July. And while the committee welcomes that announcement, uh, we, we await to be convinced given many decades of unfulfilled promises. Although enhanced studio infrastructure plays a pivotal role in supporting growth, particularly when it comes to attracting large scale productions, it's important we don't lose sight uh, of indigenous, the role indigenous productions play within the industry. Scottish producers told us public sector broadcasters don't commission enough content from Scottish company, companies and the committee says quite clearly in our report that it expects to see more work commissioned from Scotland by those public sector broadcasters. We want Ofcom to tighten up the definition of what constitutes a Scottish programme under the nation's uh, quota and we want more robust reporting in this area. We also recommended that ITV, like the BBC and Channel 4, I'm should have a nation's need to, quota uh, uh, as part of its stop existing... Stop just a second, convener, if you sit down a moment. You've already had an extra minute. I can only give right, you another just, minute more. I'll just finish up Thank now. I'll just finish up now. Um, uh, the Creative Scotland's recent letter to the committee sets out a progress report in regard to uh, research work and uh, the gathering of data, which was one of our other recommendations. Uh, as I said in my opening remarks, there are many reasons to be optimistic about the future of the Scottish screen sector, and we are convinced about its potential benefits. Uh, but we want to make sure that uh, we reach our, our potential. Uh, we want Scotland to be a screen leader, and I move the motion in my name. Thank you.